all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees please leave the main floor of the chambers? If you are seated upstairs in the balcony, there is no photography upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. Mr. Public Advocate. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of November 14th, 2019. I am Public Advocate Jumani Williams. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Kimberly L. Detheridge, the pastor of St. Mark Amy Church, located at 90. I am mistaken. We will first have roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. I should be here. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. I'm here. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Here. Deutsch. Here. Diaz. Drum. Here. Espinal. Here. Eugene. Present. Gibson. I'm here. Jonai. Gredenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Lewis. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Present. Perkins. Present. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Richards. I. I mean here. <laughs> Rivera. Yeah. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Vallone. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. And now we'll have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Kimberly L. Detheridge, the pastor of St. Mark AME Church, located at 9518 Northern Boulevard in Jackson Heights, Queens. Let us pray. Dear most gracious and everlasting God, creator and sustainer of the universe, giver of life, we come this afternoon to invoke your presence and to say thank you. First of all, Lord, thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for the members of the city council. Thank you for their servant leadership, their commitment and dedication to the work that you have called them to do and the good work that they have already accomplished. Thank you for the wonderful mosaic of people that live, work, play, and visit this great city called New York, whom they serve. Bless the Speaker of the Council, the Honorable Corey Johnson, as he presides over this stated meeting. Bless all the members of the City Council, and bless my own councilman, the Honorable Francisco Moya of the 21st Council District. Lord, you have entrusted this city into their hands. Give them wisdom, understanding, and patience in determining what is best for all New Yorkers. 
In these troubled times where powers and principalities seek to divide and oppress, continue to help them to understand and provide for the needs of our city, the vulnerable, the lost, the poor, the oppressed, and the issues that they deal with of affordable housing and criminal justice and educational reform and safety and security of our people, sex trafficking, mental health, and what it means to be neighbor. We are reminded in your word, Lord, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We are all each other's neighbors. And may they listen and hear the concerns of this city. May their decisions be tempered with justice and mercy as they serve all the constituents of New York City. Thank you for their vision. Thank you for their staff. Continue to give them the moral fortitude of what is right. Unify, encourage, uplift, strengthen, and restore them. Watch over them and their families. Bless them in all that they do to make New York a better city for us all. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, we'll now ask Council Member, now ask Council Member Moy to spread the invocation on the record. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. I'd like to make a motion to spread the invocation uh, in full upon uh, the record. Uh, it's also uh, a great honor to have and introduce uh, Reverend Kem uh, Kimberly Dethridge, Esquire of the St. Mark's uh, African Methodist uh, Ep Episcopal Church that has a rich and storied history. Its leadership in faith and community and its dedication to the civil rights movement so that justice and human rights issues are something that uh, I can think humbles us all. Uh, so it's no feat to make history in the AME Church, but it's exactly what Reverend Dethridge has done. In 2010, she became the church's first female pastor in its 184 year history and has been a shining example of faith, love, and service every, every day since. Among her many titles and accolades, Reverend Dethridge is a president of the Corona East Elmhurst Clergy Association and a former chaplain of the NYPD Grandmothers Love Program, which helps grandmothers raising their children. Reverend Dethridge is also the first black female supervisor in the Legal Aid Society Criminal Defense Division in the Brooklyn office. Uh, there, she continues to work uh, fighting for civil rights and workers' rights. She is a spiritual beacon, and I am so proud to have her here with us today to make the invocation. Uh, thank you, and God bless you, uh, Reverend uh, Dethridge, for being here. Um, thank you, and I know Councilman Adams wants to say something. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Majority Leader. I had to add on to the invocation, which was so graciously done by my colleague, Councilmember Moya, because uh, Reverend Dethridge happens to be the pastor of my home church, St. Mark African Methodist Episcopal Church in Jackson Heights, where my dad, Irvin Eady, still is a member for 40 years or so. So Reverend Kim, we're so blessed to have you today. Beautiful invocation, God bless you and thank you. Thank you so much and I just wanna make sure that we understand we have an awesome majority leader, that's Laurie Cumbo. Uh, <laughs> So we'll have uh, now the adoption of minutes. None. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M194, excuse me. I want to thank you, and at this time I'm asking for a roll call vote on today's uh, land use call-up calendar. We're just voting on the land use call-ups right now. Adams. I vote aye. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Shin. Aye. Cohen. Constantinidis. I'd like to vote yes on all land use call ups, and with your permission, I'd like to also vote yes on all couple of general orders and resolutions. Permission granted. I'd like to vote aye. Thank you. Carnegie, yes. Deutsch, yes. Diaz, Drum, aye. Espinal, aye. Eugene, I would I, Gibson, I would I, Jonai, Gordon, oh, thank you, 
Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lansman. Aye. Lander. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Mizell. Uh, I would like to vote yes on all land use call-ups. And with your permission, I would like to also vote yes on all couple general orders and resolutions. Permission granted. Thank yes. you. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye on all. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Permission yeah. granted. Thank you. Oh, 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 these are call-ups. Oh, forget it. Oh, sorry. I vote aye. I'm having a fun day today. <laughs> Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. I vote aye on all Lang's call-ups, and with permission, I'd like to vote aye on all items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. Commissioner Grant. Thank you. Cohen. Aye. Torres. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. Van Bramer. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. Aye. Speaker Johnson. I would aye, but I'd also like to say something before uh, Councilmember Maisel uh, leaves, which is I am very, 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 very happy that he's back. He is a good friend. He is a great member of this body, and he has been out. So I want to welcome back Alan Maisel. And with that, I vote aye on the land use call-up calendar. Uh, today's thank you and uh, peace and blessings to Council Member Mizell. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. We'll now have communication from uh, Speaker Corey Johnson. Before that, I just want to say, Mr. Speaker, as of a few weeks ago, uh, this is my first time back since the general election, and I want to tell the body and the city, unfortunately, it stuck with me at least for the next two years. Boy, do we know it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you're here. Congratulations. Uh, good afternoon. I want to thank everyone for being here today on this important stated meeting. This morning, we had, a very, we had very tragic news coming out of Southern California. There was yet another mass shooting, a high school shooting. One person was killed, more injured, two of them in critical condition, and it was a shooting at Saugus High School in Santa Clarita, California. This, of course, is horrific, and this senseless violence has to stop. How many more tragedies do we have to endure to pass serious gun control reform laws in this country? And I also want to thank our veterans for their selfless service to our country. Although Veterans Day was on Monday, our gratitude for their service is endless. And I really want to thank all the veterans of New York City, those who are currently serving, those who uh, are no longer serving but still proudly wear the uniform and have dedicated their lives to supporting and defending our country. As I do at each stated, I want to recognize some of the important events that have happened recently. Last week, as you mentioned, Mr. Public Advocate, was Election Day, and for the very first time, early voting was an option. I personally took advantage of this to cast my vote early, and I know many New Yorkers who did the same. We need more bold moves to strengthen our democracy. New Yorkers voted on major changes to our city's constitution. Uh, thanks to the Charter Revision Commission. The commission was created by the City Council with now Attorney General Letitia James. 
uh, who was then public advocate, and Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer. And I want to thank all the members of the Charter Revision Commission who worked for over a year as volunteers to get this right. I'm grateful for their service and how hard they listened to the public. I also want to congratulate the winners in that election last week, and a few of them are our public advocate, Jimani Williams, uh, our council member and colleague, Farrah Lewis, and future district attorney, Melinda Katz, as well. I want to congratulate them. Congratulations, Farrah. I feel like we've congratulated you like nine times since you joined the body, so uh, we are really, really grateful that you're here. Uh, as I do at every state, I want to recognize some of the major losses that our city has faced recently. Last week, shh. Last week, retired FDNY firefighter Cecilia Cox died at the age of 68. Cecilia was a true trailblazer and one of the first women to join the department. She joined in 1982 after suing for discrimination and she served for over 20 years in the FDNY. We are deeply, deeply grateful for her courage, for her trailblazing and for her service. The NYPD also suffer, uh, suffered a loss. Linda Mercer was a 9-11 first responder and traffic enforcement agent who died, yet again, another victim of 9-11 related cancer. She passed away on November 6th. She fought tirelessly for other first responders, particularly non-uniform personnel who suffered from 9-11 related diseases. All of New York will be forever grateful for Linda's courage that never took a day off. My condolences are with the families of Cecilia Cox and Linda Mercer and both the FDNY and the NYPD. And I'd ask us to all stand for a moment of silence to honor Cecilia and Linda. Thank you. This month, we're also celebrating National American Indian Heritage Month. And this month is a reminder to our nation's first people to honor the land that we are standing on. We are also celebrating Puerto Rican Heritage Month and the many, many contributions of Puerto Rican New Yorkers. We had a great uh, uh, ceremony here last night in the chambers. Uh, and uh, I am really grateful uh, for the work that everyone has been doing. And I especially uh, want to say, I, I think I can speak for all of us when I say that Puerto Rico is a special place. Many of us were just there uh, last weekend, especially for our city, which has so many ties to the island. New York wouldn't be what it is today without the contributions of both Puerto Ricans and Native Americans. And I'm happy to be honoring them this month. This week also kicked off Transgender Awareness Week, a week dedicated to raising the visibility of trans people while also working to address issues that members of the community face. The LGBT caucus led by Chair Drum has been hosting uh, a Trans Day of Awareness exhibit in the City Hall Rotunda. It was happening today in partnership with the LaGuardia and Wagner Archives. And I want to thank uh, Danny for making this uh, exhibit extra special by sharing his collection of photos featuring many trans leaders from Jackson Heights who are members of Make the Road New York and are great New Yorkers. We must continue to stand with the trans community and on Trans Day of Remembrance, November 20th, we'll remember those who we have lost to violence. So please, before you leave the building today, check out the exhibition uh, in the rotunda. Last but not least, saddens me to announce that the council is losing a legendary figure and a good friend to me. I don't even want to read it. Rob Newman is retiring from the council after almost 21 years of service to this legislative body. He started on the General Welfare Committee where he exposed the city's failed approach to poverty. Rob has served in so, so, so many invaluable roles, helping all of us navigate the laws that govern the city and the best ways to improve or change them. He's overseen the drafting and introduction of literally thousands of bills that have become law in this city uh, and shepherded so many of them in working with all of us. 
His work has helped expand opportunities for minority and women-owned businesses, created some of the most rigorous campaign finance laws in the entire country, and he proudly has limited local cooperation with immigration and customs enforcement. He's truly made New York greater and more equal, and on a personal note, I am so proud that Rob has been my counsel for the last almost two years, someone who I've talked to almost every single day, someone who I've relied upon for uh, wisdom and counsel, someone who is always balancing 30 different things for me at a time and always gets the job done. Uh, the master plans bill that we just passed, the master streets plan bill that we just passed, uh, a couple of weeks ago, which will revolutionize the way we move around and make our city safer, would not have been possible without Rob Newman's input and guidance. The state of the city I gave earlier this year calling for municipal control and the 104-page report that accompanied it was led by Rob and his team. Uh, and it is true of so much of the work that we have done together has been done in the spirit of service and the spirit of Rob's love of New York City, but also his love of this body. I will miss him terribly, but he has also created a top-notch legislative team. Uh, I'm really grateful for Kelly Taylor uh, and their entire team. He's created a top-notch team, so his legacy will live on. Rob, you will be missed. Thanks, Rob. Uh, now let's dive into our legislative agenda. We'll be voting on the following land use items. Two application in Council Member Jimmy Van Bramer's district, Hunters Point South Parcels F and G, which will facilitate two mixed-use buildings, including 850 affordable housing units and 4401 Northern Boulevard rezoning, a zoning to facilitate the construction of a new mixed-use building. The application will be modified to include MIH option one. The Peninsula Hospital site redevelopment will facilitate the development of over 2 million square feet including almost 2,000 affordable units, 200 senior units, and new community facilities. I want to congratulate uh, Councilman Richards for his hard work on this application. Finally, uh, 4797 Third Avenue is a technical change in Councilman Richie Torres' district. And then there is the East Side Coastal Resiliency Project. Uh, this is a critical project uh, about coastal uh, resiliency and climate resiliency uh, for the East Side of Manhattan. Council members uh, Rivera, Powers, and Chin were tireless advocates for their communities but also have been mindful about the project's central goal, which was to realize much needed infrastructure improvement to reduce flood risk and improve access to the waterfront. And I wanna thank them for their hard work on this. Out of the Finance Committee, the Council will vote on the following pieces of legislation. Introduction number 1780, sponsored by Chair Danny Drum and supported by the administration, will extend the current rate of the additional tax on the occupancy of hotel rooms at 5.878% through November 30th, 2023. There are three pre-considered resolutions, all sponsored by our finance chair, which together will readopt the fiscal 2020 property tax rates to provide tax relief to class one and class two homeowners. Because of the council's action today, class one rates will rise by only 1.2% over the 2019 rates instead of 6.3%, thereby saving typical homeowners about $321 per year. And class two rates will be the lowest they've been since the fiscal 2009 budget. There is J2, which is in Councilmember Danique Miller's district in Queens, and it will receive a full 40-year Article 11 property tax exemption to construct 543 units of affordable rental housing. 
Moving on, the council will be voting on the following piece of legislation. Our first piece of legislation is related to the criminal justice work that the council has been doing. Introduction number 1156A, sponsored by Councilmember Steve Levin, would require the Office of Nightlife to report on the frequency and effects of multi-agency response to community hotspot march operations across the city. The NYPD would be required to provide written notifications to establishment owners at least 30 days before their inclusion in a potential march operation which must outline the conditions that need to be remedied. I want to thank uh, from the staff, Maxwell Kampfer, for his work on that bill. Now, a few health bills. Today we're celebrating World Diabetes Day and what a timely way to raise awareness and fight against this illness than through policy. Introduction number 1361B, sponsored by our health committee chair, Mark Levine, would require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to report twice a year on the rate of diabetes-related health problems in New York City and to compile a comprehensive report and recommendations by 2021. I want to thank Councilmember Levine for his work on spearheading this important piece of legislation, and I want to acknowledge the tireless work of Chris Norwood, the founder and executive director of Health People and the entire Health People team, especially their peer educators. This legislation would not have been possible without her work and their work to raise awareness of diabetes. When I was Health Committee Chair, Chris Norwood would not leave me alone about getting this done, and I'm glad that her advocacy, is she here today? Uh, is she up there? Uh, health People's here in the house. Uh, where's Chris? There's Chris. Chris, I want to thank you for your really Really important work. Um, next is introduction 1598A, sponsored by Councilmember Robert Holden, which would require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to provide information regarding city services available for the proper disposal of deceased animals and to post information online. And introduction number 1496A, sponsored by Councilmember Justin Brannon, would require an animal shelter directed by a sheriff or city marshal executing a warrant of eviction or any order of judgment granting legal possession to retrieve a companion animal from such premises as expeditiously as possible after receiving such direction. And I want to thank the staff from the health committee who worked on this, Z. Emanuel Halu, Sarah Liss, and Emily Balkin. Next, we'll be voting on a package of legislation aimed at increasing diversity in New York City public schools and ensuring that all children throughout each borough have access to equal education opportunities. New York City prides itself on its diversity, but sadly, our schools are the most segregated in the United States of America. Equity takes work, desegregation takes work, real diversity in our schools takes work. It doesn't happen by magic, and these bills, I believe, are a major step in the right direction. We still have a tremendous amount of work to do, but I am very proud of this package and what it means for our students and families, and I want to single out the chair of our education committee, uh, Chair Traeger, who has been working so hard on this issue, shepherded these bills through the committee, and he has a bill that I'll speak about in a moment. But the first bill is introduction number 1540. 7A, sponsored by Councilmember Brad Lander, who has been a tireless champion and advocate on these issues, which would require the New York City Department of Education to expand its current student demographic data reporting and to provide data by grade level. DOE is already required to report on the diversity of students in public schools and its efforts to encourage diversity within schools from grades kindergarten through 12. The bill also requires DOE to report on a side-by-side -side comparison of the racial and ethnic demographics of each school or special program with the racial and ethnic demographics of the larger attendance zone and community school district. This will make the existing reporting requirement more robust and allow the city council, advocates, and others to drill down deeper into the segregation that exists in our schools and the department's efforts to remedy that. Introduction number 1554B, sponsored by our education chair, Mark Tracy would mandate the New York City Department of Education to report on the demographics of school staff, including leadership, teaching staff, and other professional and paraprofessional staff. Introduction number 1552B, sponsored by Councilmember Carlina Rivera and myself, would mandate that the establishment of district diversity working groups in each community school district. These working groups would work to facilitate the creation and publishing of public input integration plans in every school district. 
The working groups would be made up of Department of Education staff, students, parents, teachers, principals, administrators, and community advocates, and each group may also choose to partner with a community-based organization. We also have an education bill and two pieces, of two pieces of housing legislation sponsored by public advocate Jumani Williams that the council will be voting on today. Congratulations, Jumani. Introduction number 1550A, sponsored by the public advocate, would codify the School Diversity Advisory Group. The SDAG was established in 2017 by the mayor and by the New York City Department of Education as part of their diversity in New York City public schools plan, and it was designed to make formal policy recommendations to the mayor and chancellor relating to increasing diversity in our schools. This bill would ensure that the work continues in the future, and the membership of the advisory group will now include appointments from the Speaker of the Council and a public advocate appointment in addition to the mayoral appointments that already existed. And I want to thank the staff that worked on this bill with the public advocate, Malcolm Butehorn, Jan Atwell, and Kalima Johnson. Uh, Public Advocate Williams is also sponsoring introduction number 716A, which would require the Department of Housing, Preservation and Development to annually report certain information regarding the waiting lists of Mitchell Lama housing developments, including the number who were skipped and the number of complaints received about Mitchell Lama waiting lists. And I want to thank Audrey San from the staff for working on this bill. And finally, the public advocate is sponsoring introduction number 720C, which would allow not-for-profit organizations with at least three years of construction-related workforce development or training experience to apply the Department of Buildings for approval as a site safety training provider. And I want to thank Megan Chen and Austin Branford from the staff, and I congratulate the public advocate on these three bills that we're voting on today. Next, the council will vote on two additional pieces of legislation related to housing lotteries introduced by council members. Introduction number 564A, sponsored by Councilmember Mark Traeger, would require HPD to report on housing lottery outcomes, including applicant race or ethnicity and applicant preference category at the citywide and borough-wide levels, and on applicant household size and applicant household income at the citywide borough and community district levels. And I want to uh, thank from the staff, Janan Zilka, for working on this. And she worked on the next bill as well, which is introduction number 550A, sponsored by Council Member Mark Levine, which would require HPD to report on the housing lottery process, including complaints about housing lotteries, planned improvements to housing lotteries, and housing lottery methodologies. The council will also be voting on a very important piece of legislation aimed at ensuring fair wages for workers. Uh, introduction number 1321C, sponsored by Councilman Rafael Espinal, would remove the current exemption in the existing prevailing wage law, Local Law 27 of 2012, for affordable housing projects and nonprofit developers at residential projects. Local Law 27 of 2012 requires building service workers to be paid the prevailing wage in buildings where the developer receives at least a million dollars in discretionary financial assistance from the city or a city economic development entity. Accordingly, building service workers in most residential projects receiving financial assistance of more than a million dollars for new construction or preservation would be required to, be pay, to pay the prevailing wage. This bill exempts smaller residential projects with fewer than 120 units, certain supportive housing projects, deeply affordable preservation projects, and NYCHA projects financed through the Federal Rental, Assi uh, Rental Assistance Demonstration Program. I really, really want to thank 32BJ President Kyle Bragg and also Candace Tolliver from 32BJ. Uh, Kyle, I believe, is here with us. Uh, where is he? There he is. I want to thank Kyle, and I see uh, David from his team here as well, uh, because this bill was very complicated. This bill was a bill of us trying to do uh, two things, which is to raise the wages of workers throughout New York City, because we believe everyone should have a pathway to the middle class, while at the same time being thoughtful and balanced on exempting projects that were providing supportive housing or deeply affordable housing. And I know that Councilmember Espinal worked with 32BJ and the staff here to strike that balance 
balance to ensure that we are not having to make a trade-off or subsidizing potential projects across New York City that are not paying their workers a living wage, a prevailing wage, which allows them to move into the middle class. So I want to thank him for his work and dedication in getting this legislation passed responsibly and for continuing to fight for fair wages and better working conditions for all New Yorkers. And from the staff, I want to thank Michelle Lee, Malcolm Butehorn, and from my team, Rob Newman, for his work on this. His swan song was this bill. Finally, today, the council is voting on a revolutionary package of legislation that will make uh, what some may know as Hart Island and others uh, know as the city's potter's field a more respectful resting place for those who are buried there. Since 1869, Hart Island has been used as New York City's public burial ground. Located off the coast of City Island in the Bronx, many estimations report that there are over one million people buried there. In 2018 alone, 1,213 people were buried on Hart Island. I believe that how we remember those who came before us says a lot about our moral compass and about who we are as people. The people who have been buried at Hart Island were in many cases the folks who were most marginalized in life. Many were immigrants with no family here to claim them. Many could not afford funerals. Many were AIDS victims, people who died at the height of the AIDS epidemic, shunned by society and often by their own families. I'm happy to say that there has been improved access to Hart Island thanks to the work of advocates who lobbied for those changes. And I specifically want to thank Melinda Hunt, who is with us today, for her tireless advocacy on this. But even with those changes, those visiting Hart Island still feel as though they are visiting a prison when they are going to the island. I visited there December of last year, a little less than a year ago. I went with Councilmember Rodriguez, who is sponsoring this bill. And it is a, a very moving place. There is a section on the southern part of the island separate from all the other uh, plots where people are buried just for people who died of AIDS. And they were buried separate from everyone else, even though once you die, you can't give someone HIV and AIDS. But it showed the level of hysteria that was happening at the time. And they're buried in a section with not many markers, even showing where they are. It's the largest, we believe, cemetery in the world for people who have died from HIV and AIDS. So today, we are finally taking Hart Island back. A resting place should not be a place that is run by the Department of Corrections. We are transferring the property to the Department of Parks and Recreation. And that is what introduction number six, 906A, sponsored by Councilmember Adonis Rodriguez, who has been a tireless advocate on this, would do. It would transfer jurisdiction of the island from DOC to the Department of Parks and Recreation. Burials would be allowed to continue pursuant to rules and regulations established by the Department of Social Services and by the Department of Parks and Recreation and, uh, or any other agency designated by the mayor in the case of a disagreement between DSS and DPR. We have another bill from Councilman Rodriguez on this issue, introduction number 909B, which would require the Department of Transportation or another agency designated by the mayor to develop a transportation plan for public travel, including ferry service to and from Hart Island. This bill requires consideration of multiple departure locations and factors such as changing conditions and future uses of Hart Island. The agency would also have to submit a report on its plan and post the report on its website within one year of the bill's effective date. Next, we have introduction 1580A, sponsored by Councilmember Debbie Rose, which would require a public hearing on public burials to allow the public the opportunity to discuss our public burial laws, rules, regulations, policies, and procedures relating to public burials. Though this hearing, uh, the public would be able to recommend, at this hearing, the public would be able to recommend changes to these programs and consider the feasibility of alternative programs. This bill would require the Department of Social Services to submit a report summarizing and responding to comments received at a hearing by 2020. And lastly, introduction number 1559A, 
sponsored by Councilmember Diana Ayala, would require the Department of Social Services to establish an office to provide support and assistance to individuals who have lost a loved one and need information about how, about, uh, uh, how, about and helping access public burials, a burial allowance, or a similar program. This office would provide services including explaining the option of public burials and assistance in applying for a public burial allowance. And I want to thank the staff who has worked so passionately on this package of bills. I really, really want to thank them and the great job uh, they've done on this. I want to thank Z Emanuel, Halo, Sarah Liss, Emily Balkin, Chris Santori, uh, Chris Sartori, Patrick Mulvihill, and James DiGiovanni. And Mr. Public Advocate, that is our very brief, short agenda for today. And I want to thank all the council members for their work in getting these bills to the place where we could vote on them. Congratulations you. to you. And I also, uh, before we move on from speaker time, I want to give you as much opportunity as you need to discuss the three exciting bills that you're passing today. Thank you so much and, uh, for that apt description as well. Um, I am, I'm happy to speak in mind, which I will. I want to give uh, my colleagues an opportunity first as we are moving to a discussion of general orders. Uh, first, we have council members Jonai, followed by Rivera and Chin. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. First of all, on Veterans Day, I just want to reiterate that we can never do enough for our veterans and we should strive to do more. To my dear friend Rob Newman, congratulations on your endeavors. Mr. Public Advocate, thank you for allowing me to speak up on Hearts Island. Hart Island falls solely within my district. And I want to reiterate the concerns of Hart Island. The priority should have been and should be focused on preserving that island, preventing remains and bones from washing out into the Long Island Sound, which have been going on for decades. With that being said, those that are buried there should be treated with the utmost respect and dignity. The families that have family members and loved ones buried there should be treated with dignity and respect. Three of the four bills being introduced leave too much uncertainty. Hart Island means a great deal to many people, not only the family members that have loved ones buried there, but including the surrounding neighbors in a community that is impacted. I've heard from hundreds of residents with concerns that have expressed strong desires to be a part of and included in the decision-making process with respect and possibly changing to visitation rights, hours, burial alternatives, record keeping, and transportation, object, uh, transportation options. Originally, these bills created a task force which have been replaced instead and amended with a public hearing. I have no faith that this administration and its city agencies will rightfully listen to the concerns of those who have loved ones buried on Hart Island or that this administration will listen and respect the concerns of the local community. Or that the resources that are so needed, Council, given the um, amount of bills, up. I'm going to just ask if you can wrap up. All right. Or that the resources that are needed will be committed to the future of the island. Simply, these bills in their current form put the future of Hart Island on the administration, the department, and the agencies it controls. I'm not okay with that, and nor should the members in this room. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Councilmember Rivera, followed by Councilmembers Chin and Powers. Thank you for letting me speak briefly about the historic vote we are taking today for climate change protections. As we deal with this very real and present danger, undoubtedly one of the greatest threats of our lifetimes and certainly this century. For the last seven years, I've watched my community slow and painful recovery from the physical and emotional damage Superstorm Sandy has wreaked on all of us. We are lucky that we haven't seen a storm as bad as Sandy since, but it's inevitable, and we cannot let our good fortune distract us from moving forward as we face more intense storms, flooding, and destruction. 
Today we have a chance with the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project to not only approve real protections, but also address decades of environmental ignorance on the Lower East Side. I move forward with negotiations thinking of injustices we have faced as a community, the FDR drive built by Robert Moses with no concept of its environmental impact, lead-lined apartments in our NYCHA campuses that have still not been repaired, and of course the mold that was exacerbated after Hurricane Sandy's waters flooded our homes and our businesses. That is why this agreement we reached this week for ESCR goes beyond protections for the next 100 years, brings in a phase project design, a new amphitheater, ball fields, tennis courts, and bridges, all of what we fought for in this plan since 2012. With this vote, we are also bringing a long list of community improvements to over 17 parks, six NYCHA campuses, partnerships with community gardens, extended hours at school recreation sites, and new barbecue areas. We're voting to expand pedestrian-focused infrastructure with commitments for new protected bike lanes in Alphabet City and the expansion of closed street programming that includes pocket parks. And we're planning for the future with a, bold, with a new disaster preparedness campaign for our frontline residents and a commitment to study the future of the FDR drive that must include reduced vehicle use and emissions. If I could just have a minute, I've been working on this for a long time. There'll be, there's another opportunity when they vote. They just have a lot, so we can All right, wrap no doubt, up. No doubt. Okay. But as this project spanning three council districts move forward, it's clear that the community's trust with the city surrounding this project must continue to be prepared, uh, repaired. I certainly understand the mistrust after decades of neglect certain neighborhoods have experienced at the hands of all levels of government, especially the recovery process that NYCHA endures to this day. I will say all of my thank yous um, when we vote, and this is a really important personal project for me. I was a principal organizer after Hurricane Sandy, and to finally bring protections to my community, I am really, really proud of us all today. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Chin Powers, followed by Rodriguez and Menchaca. Hey, thank you, Public Advocate. The serious threat that so many fear about climate change is a painful reality already felt by a our waterfront community, especially after Hurricane Sandy. Seven years later, we're still bouncing back. Our east side community, especially NYCHA residents, cannot afford to wait another seven years for coastal protection and resiliency improvement that they should have received long ago. Today's vote on the east side coastal resiliency agreement will deliver on the promise we made to act so that their lives will not be uprooted when the next storm hits. The road leading to today's vote was not easy by any means, and we thank our constituents for pushing us to fight for bolder open space improvement, parks mitigation, and nature protection. And I'm thankful to the leadership of our speaker, and especially my colleague, Council Member Rivera, and our partner, Council Member Power, and our wonderful land use staff for persisting on greater transparency, more engagement, and stronger community investment. This vote is a long time coming, and I'm grateful for the work that brought us here to this point. This is a win for resiliency, for climate action, and for ensuring that our most vulnerable waterfront community are given the attention that they deserve. And I urge all my colleagues to vote yes on this. And I also wanted to take this time to thank the administration for partnering and working with us, uh, the commissioner of DDC, Lorraine Grillo, Jamie Torres Springer, Deputy Commissioner, Park Commissioner Silver, Alisa yeah, Cobb Colon, Alda Chan, the Mayor's Office of Legislative Affairs, Joe Toronto, Gabby Dan, Aliel, Sean Fitzpatrick, and our community board, community board three, Trevor Holland, Susan Stetzer, and, Jane, and Jim Shelton. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Members Powers, Rodriguez, and Menchaca. Thank you. I will join uh, Council Member Chin and Rivera to speak on the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project, which to me is a critical step in New York City's fight against climate change. As any of us who live near the water during Super Swim Sandy, including myself, can attest, protecting our communities from flooding and the next storm is absolutely vital. Seven years ago, as the river flooded and the water overtook all of our waterfront parks, we lost power, 
uh, buildings were flooded, services every residents rely on were disrupted, and this is only our part of it. We have a citywide uh, impact on when it comes to, to flooding. Since we began discussing the new plan last fall, my colleagues and I have worked tirelessly to make sure it maintained the balance between preparing for a future where climate crisis is an everyday reality, while also guaranteeing that our parks and our communities would be restored and improved. To reject this plan today to vote no would be putting us on an uncertain path toward resiliency, would be jeopardizing hundreds of millions of dollars in federal funding allocated for this specific project, and set a precedent of throwing away a well-developed, well-thought, and hard-fought plan out the window for every community that's going to have to go through this in the future. As I've sat here today, I've talked to my colleagues about their needs and their desires to have their communities in the outer boroughs and other places that were affected also be protected against a new superstorm because we all are in a new reality where climate change is the, rea is the reality and all of our communities still remain unprotected against the next storm, which could happen any day or any year in the future. It is our responsibility as council members, in my view, is to find that balance between protecting our communities and doing what is right for the 100,000 people who will be protected under this plan. Many of you here represent other parts of the city that were hit just as hard as my district and others, uh, others here, here today by Super Most Storm Sandy, and it's my hope that we have a plan today that was acknowledge the needs of the community, has found the right balance between resiliency and the community needs, and has made very significant investments that will be both short, medium, and long-term investments in our community. I do support it. I hope you'll join us in the vote uh, to support it today. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Members Rodriguez, Menchaca, and Richards. Thank you, Public Advocate. First of all, thank you, Speaker Johnson. As I said at the pre-stated meeting, what I have experienced in your leadership is that we've been able to pass a number of bills that I was told that the city didn't have the authority to do it or that we couldn't do it. So this was one of those type of bills that my previous colleague, Elizabeth Crowley, she tried to move on. And unfortunately, she was told that the city couldn't do it. Same thing happened for me with the transfer uh, closing right asylum. I, I put language, I was told the city could not do it. Fair, fair, I was told that the city couldn't do it. You established UN UPK, I was told that the city couldn't do it. And what we have seen is that when we have a progressive body and we have a leadership like you, like you, we are moving bills. And I know that there's many others to come. When I met with members of the Latino communities, Dominican, Puerto Ricans, Garifuna, when I meet and talk to the African community from Nigeria and other places, when I talk to anyone who has been immigrants like myself, what I had heard is one thing. We have failed to one million family. One million body has been buried in the largest public cemetery in the whole United States of America. Who are those people? Those people are black. They were buried after the Civil War because some white people, they didn't want to be buried together with black people. So they was brought to that location. They're immigrants. They are the generation that we lost during the HIV. They are hardworking individuals that unfortunately we close this, the, the, that place where we want to be united, giving the respect to them, being able to visit them. Before 2014, no one was able to visit Rikers Island. Now we still have restriction, but we transfer the island. What we are saying is that we live progressive, that from now on, the largest public cemetery will be open to everyone. Gracias, este cementerio, un templo sagrado, se abre de aquí para adelante para darle respeto a los inmigrantes, a los pobres que están enterrados en ese lugar. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmembers Menchaca and Richards. Thank you. Um, I would like to speak on intro 720C and really ask everyone to support this bill. You know, in 19, uh, sorry, in 2017, we passed what is now local law 196. Uh, this really was a kind of first big move that brought union workers and non-union workers together to address something that's been happening and continues to happen to this day, the deaths on construction sites. Many of the workers that work on construction sites are immigrant workers, those who are dying. Many of them are Spanish-speaking, but they're immigrants. 
The construction that we are seeing continues to suffer from an ins insufficient safety training and the exploitation that happens by developers in the construction industry. But we have a solution. 720C will allow for a new opportunity for MWBEs and day labor organizations that we work with every day in our neighborhoods to be able to be on the ground training uh, the men and women who are on our construction sites. This law allows for that access to happen in multiple languages, to include um, Spanish and other, other languages uh, in, in our communities, specifically in immigrant communities, and MWBE uh, uh, opportunities. Intro 720C would close that loop and allow groups who serve the city's most vulnerable construction workers to get the safety training needed. I wanna thank Jason um, Goldman and Speaker Johnson for their support, but also the Progressive Caucus and the BLAC who came in uh, this week and really ensured that there was broad support across the council. Thank you so much and I look forward to passing this. Um, finally though, actually, in my thir 13 seconds, Jumani. Our public advocate, uh, we, we were doing this work last session and we needed to close this loop and we did it and I just want to say thank you. Uh, you've been leading this from the beginning and I'm just happy to call you my brother. Thank you. If you want to keep talking about me, I might give you more time. Okay, can I? <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, thank you, Councilman Miller. Councilman Richards. Thank you. I want to talk about the Peninsula Hospital rezone and what a great day for the people of the Rockaways, but in particular for the people who reside in both Edgemere and Arvern, a neighborhood I actually lived in right across the street from the site. Uh, this neighborhood has always had the potential to not only serve as a retail destination for local residents, but a tourist attraction as well. However, like many neighborhoods on the eastern portion of the Rock Rockaways, sorely needed infrastructure, affordable housing, quality jobs, and a lack of space for our young people to congregate have been non-existent. This vacuum created immense challenges, such as the highest unemployment rate in Queens, high rates of obesity due to a lack of access to a supermarket in close proximity to thousands of public housing residents and homeowners. But today I'm happy to announce the Edgemere Commons project seeks to address these systematic issues. This project will serve as a template for what a resilient mixed-use development should look like in the 21st century. During a time when our city is facing one of the largest housing crises we have ever witnessed, this project will produce over 2,000 units of true affordable housing, serving a healthy mix of incomes as low as 30% AMI. The addition of much needed senior housing units are also a big win for those who wish to age in place gracefully in the Rockaways. I want my community to know we heard you loud and clear on the need to ensure we just aren't building housing but addressing the needs of our community as well. This is why I'm happy to announce the creation of a new community center, healthcare facility, supermarket, open space, and much needed local and destination retail as well. The combination of these will enable us to stimulate the economy in Edgemere and ensure our youth and their families will have a safe space for activities. Lastly, I'm happy to announce we've reached an agreement with the ARCA companies and 32BJ, and I want to thank Kyle Bragg for all of his hard work uh, to crossing to getting this over the line. This will ensure we aren't subsidizing low paying jobs. We also have an agreement with the developer to, uh, for 35% local hiring and 30% MWBE and also a fund to ensure youth and community development and workforce could be tracked properly. I just want to close by thanking the amazing land use staff led by Raju Mann, John Douglas, Amy Levinson, and Julie Lubin, and both of our chairs, uh, both Salamanca and Moya, for their hard work on this application as well. I urge my colleagues to vote aye. Uh, thank you very much, Council Member. Just really briefly, I would like to encourage uh, my uh, colleagues to vote on three bills before you today. First one, 1550, School Diversity Advisory Group. Uh, I want to thank uh, the staff, uh, the speaker, and uh, Council Member Traeger uh, to codify into law uh, the committee that uh, just finished their work in dealing with uh, school diversity. Uh, this will make sure that there is a mixture of voices from students to parents uh, and teachers. And of course, we want to make sure that the Council uh, had some people appointed as well to provide some balance and the Public Advocates Office because of course the Public Advocates got to get some as well. Uh, and I want to thank uh, the speaker and a big shout out to Councilmember Menchaca uh, and uh, Zara Nassau from the 
Progressive Caucus, Brandon Clark from the Black Latino Asian Caucus, of course Jason Goldman uh, around uh, 720, and the rest of the staff. Uh, as uh, Councilmember Machaca mentioned, we've been working on this for a very long time. It will make a lot of uh, groups happy who uh, we assured them that when we passed this bill a few years ago, they would have access to be able to provide uh, this kind of training, and now they will. We'll be opening up the people who can provide the training, which will be opening up the people who can get the training so that we can get to the deadline that everyone agreed to. Uh, lastly, 716A uh, is a Mitchell Lama bill. I'm very excited about this. It's been working for a very long time. People may have heard of uh, the kind of things that have been going on around Mitchell Lama waiting lists. In fact, earlier this year, three people were arrested for bribery. Uh, it was one of the uh, hearings that this council had where the administration actually had nothing. They provided nothing. So this will make these lists uh, be transparent and public so everyone can see. And I thank the speaker, I thank uh, the chair, uh, Carnegie, uh, for this. And I thank this body uh, for allowing me uh, to get these bills passed. Thank you so much. And. Uh, Report of special committees? None. Rep Reports of standing committees? Report of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor, Intro 1321C, Prevailing Wage Law. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Education, Intro 1547A through Intro 1554B on the same page, Diversity in Public Schools. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Intro 1780, Hotel Taxes. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Reso 1152 through Preconsidered Reso 1154 on page 3, Property Taxes. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Reso 1155, Organization Funding. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 577 and Reso 1157, Tax Exemption. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Health, Intro 1361B, Diabetes Reporting. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1496A, Companion Animals. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1559A through Intro 1598A on page 4, Public Burial and Related Issues. I want to give a special shout out to Emily Balkin uh, from the staff who has worked tirelessly on this issue and uh, amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 50. Intro 550A and 564A housing lottery system. Amended and coupled to general orders. Intro 716A Mitchell Lama developments. Amended and coupled to general orders. Intro 720C site safety training. Amended and coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Justice System. Intro 1156A community hotspots. Amended and coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use. LU 548 through LU 554 on page 7 various applications. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to section 197D of the New York City Charter. <clears throat> Excuse me, LU 558 and Reso 115825 Central Park West. Coupled to be filed pursuant to a letter of withdrawal. LU 559 and 560 Northern Boulevard rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 563 and Reso 1159 Hunters Point South. Coupled on general orders. LU 571 and Reso 1160 4797 Third Avenue. Coupled of general orders. Preconsidered LU 578 and Reso 1161 and preconsidered LU 579 and Reso 1162 Bronx Special Districts. Coupled to be filed pursuant to letter of withdrawal. Report of the Committee on Parks and Recreation, Intro 906A, Hart Island. Amended and coupled in general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, Intro 909B, Hart Island Travel Plan. Another shout out to Melinda Hunt, amended and coupled in general orders. On the general order calendar, LU 548 and Reso 1163 through LU 560 and Reso 1171 on page 12, various applications returned from city planning. Coupled to general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled to general orders, and at this time, I'm asking for roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. 11. Um, I vote aye on all, and I want to just thank on the March bill, um, uh, the Black Institute, New York City Artist Coalition, Olympia Kazi, Julia Friedenberg, Jamie Burkhart, Ode to Babel, Marva Babel, um, staff Maxwell Camphor Williams, uh, Kishore and Denny, my colleague Raphael Espinal, and Sarah Conklin, and everyone else that worked on that bill. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Adams. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Aye on all with the exception of 563 on which I'm voting no. And I am abstaining on 548 and 549 and the accompanying resolutions.
Brennan. Uh, I have an eye on all with the exception of 1780, 1152, 53, and 54. Cabrera. I don't know. Matteo. Uh, I don't know if he's still here, but I just want to wish Rob Newman the best in his future endeavors. And congratulations. Um, I thank you for your friendship. I thank you for the work you did on our AED bills. I know how personal it was for you and your son. And I'm glad we can see those AED bills through. Um, and we're going to miss you here at the council. Um, with that, I'm voting no on 1152, 1153, 1156, 1321, 1547, 1550, 1552, 1554, and 1780, and I and what's left. Chin. Congratulations to all my colleagues on passing mm. their great legislations, and I proudly vote I, I don't know. I appreciate that. Cohen. Aye. Cornegie. Permission to explain my vote. Permission to grant it. So whether you're a homeowner in Bed-Stuy, Bay Ridge, or Baychester, the burden of property taxes are too much for all New Yorkers to bear, particularly for lower and middle income individuals who are already, who aren't well served by the outdated tax system. Today we have the opportunity to support tax relief for property owners in New York City, but it's not enough. A state formula dictates the tax rates for property owners in the city, and New York City has very little leverage to change the effective rates. We requested that the state change one component in the formula, which the governor has done. And this will take the tax burden for tax class two properties to the lowest they've been since fiscal year 2009. Additionally, class one properties will see a slight reduction in their tax burden, but it's still be a higher rate than last year. I'm glad that we can do this little bit today, but the real fix is in the long term. The Speaker and the Mayor have called for a reform commission, and we expect a report from that group at the end of this year. I look forward to reading their findings and getting to work with my colleagues to provide tax reliefs to all New Yorkers property and property owners. I must highlight that this is an important issue in every part of the city, regardless of race and heritage. Meaningful change for all New Yorkers means holistic change, and I look forward to getting that done one day. With that being said, I have eye on everything except 1152, 53, and 54. Deutsch. I know with the exception of 1580, 906, 909, 1780, and Rezo's 1152, 1153, and 1154. Drum. Espinal. Permission to play my vote? Permission granted. Uh, it's no secret that the cost of living in the city uh, has dramatically gone up while people's wages have stayed stagnant. And because of that, we are, uh, one of the reasons is that we are, one of those reasons that, because of that, we are in an affordable housing crisis. And we have been working to build affordable housing across the city, uh, but uh, a lot of that affordable housing uh, has workers that are making a minimum wage. Uh, and what we're passing a bill, 1321B, that would require uh, affordable housing uh, to have workers being paid a prevailing wage. Uh, we worked diligently to get this bill passed. We worked with all stakeholders from hearing stories from the workers, worked with affordable housing groups to figure out to find the right balance that we're building uh, real affordable housing while also making sure that people are getting paid a prevailing wage to continue to be able to put food on their table and pay their rents. So I am proud of this bill. I want to thank uh, 32BJ. I want to thank uh, the speaker, I want to thank his staff, I want to thank Rob Newman, who have put in a lot of hours to get this done, uh, and I want to thank my colleagues who have all signed on uh, to get this passed. Uh, so with that said, I vote aye on all. Also, sorry, I want to congratulate Steve Levin on passing uh, the March bill. It's a bill that I was super supportive of, and it's going to uh, uh, be able to super support a lot of the marginalized communities that continue to be over-policed upon uh, in, in the nightlife community. So I'm very proud of that bill being passed and a lot of congratulations to the New York City Artists Coalition. Thank you. 
Eugene. Permission to explain my vote. Commissioner Granny. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pibur Advocate. I just want to uh, thank and commend us, uh, uh, the Chair Levin, the Chair of the Health Committee, for this uh, very important bill on diabetes. And, uh, you know, diabetes is a very serious disease affecting many people in New York City and throughout the world. And I think that uh, we have the, the moral mandate to do everything that we can do to ensure that we can keep people healthy and to contribute the well-being of, to the well-being of the people. This is a wonderful bill because, because we know that uh, these diseases affect all the system in the human body and can uh, create also other diseases, like cardiovascular disease, neurologic disease, and affect the kidney. And I think this is a very, very important step in uh, trying to provide the best uh, quality of life uh, uh, to people that uh, we are serving. And I want to thank uh, the speaker for his support to this uh, bill. And to conclude, let me uh, thank also Rob Newman for his uh, excellent service to New York City Council. I had the privilege uh, to go to him also for assistance. And I thank him for his service uh, to me and to the City Council also. He was a great servant of the City Council. But I'm proud to say that I'm his humble servant because he's my constituent. He, we will miss him but I will see him in the district. Rob, thank you very much for your outstanding service. With this, I vote aye and all. Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate, and good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, congratulations to everyone for passing incredibly important legislation today. I want to just shout out a couple of our colleagues in recognizing their incredible efforts in getting legislation passed today. Um, I want to thank our former colleague, Elizabeth Crowley, for starting the conversation, and Councilmember Idanis Rodriguez for making sure that the legislation on today's agenda related to Hearts Island is passed, um, understanding the population of residents and New Yorkers that are buried on Hearts Island. I also want to recognize, in addition to those that have died of AIDS, we also have a significant number of veterans who are buried on Hearts Island. And many of the veteran organizations have been ad advocating for this legislation. So I look forward to working with our colleagues in the Parks Department on the implementation to make sure we not only preserve the island, restore dignity, but provide uh, enhanced transportation and access to the island. Um, I want to congratulate all of the healthcare advocates uh, from Health People and Chris Norwood and yes. her team. Um, as someone who's been affected in my family by diabetes, I am pre-diabetic myself. Certainly this legislation is going to have a profound impact on raising awareness around diabetes as well as offering more education and awareness and promotion in many of our communities, so I applaud that and also want to recognize uh, Council Member Rafael Espinal and the legislation related to prevailing wage for building service employees at certain development projects. Thank you for your leadership and to all the 32BJ family, our president Kyle Bragg and, and many others who really made sure that we continue to lift up our working New Yorkers and we provide the dignity that they all deserve as well as the services that they provide every single day in our communities. And also want to congratulate Rob Newman on his incredible service here at the City Council. May God bless you in your new journey and new chapter of service. We will miss you. And with that, I vote aye on all. And congratulations, public advocate. Thank you. Joe Nye. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. I vote aye on all except 1780. I will not be supporting the renewal of the hotel tax. Uh, resolutions 1152, 53, and 54, our real estate tax system is broken. No matter how you put it, this is a real estate tax increase, which will make it harder for renters, homeowners, and businesses to survive and remain as residents in our city. Out of borough residents already face the higher effective rate, and the 13th Council District has the highest effective tax rate in the entire city. So I vote no on those three resolutions and no on 1580, 909, 906 pertaining to Hart Island, Potter's Field, for the uncertainty and the future of Hart Island because the bills do not go far enough to assure that those that are buried there and the families that have loved ones buried there
will be treated with dignity and respect and assuring that the money that's needed and resources that's needed to maintain that cemetery, to maintain Hart Island, hasn't been streamlined and fully dedicated to the necessity of its requirements. Thank you. Grudenchik. Uh, Mr. Public Advocate, permission to briefly explain my vote. Commissioner Granite. Thank you, congratulations to you. Um, I want to congratulate my seatmate Donovan Richards on the Edgemere redevelopment. This is something that literally has been kicking around since before he was born. So uh, congratulations to you, Donovan. Uh, I want to echo my colleague Rob Cornegie's remarks. I'm going to vote yes on that property tax package um, because it does represent a decline in the rate, but we really need to do real property tax reform. Uh, the property tax owners, mostly single-family homeowners in the city, are getting clobbered. And the rates continue to go up by about 6% a year. Uh, the revenue does anyway, and um, it, it has to stop because it's just unsustainable. With that, I vote aye on all with the exception of uh, intro 906, from which I abstain. Thank you. Holden. Uh, I vote aye on all with the exception of 1547A, 1550A, 1552B, 1554B, 1556A, 1780, and pre-considered resos 1152, 1153, and 1154. I vote no. Thank you. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote briefly? Mr. Granite. I uh, just want to speak in favor of introduction 1321C and making sure that as the city subsidizes projects, we're not actually making the affordable housing crisis worse by paying people poverty wages. Uh, this legislation will make sure that the people who are caring for our buildings in our cities that are receiving uh, subsidies will hopefully be able to afford to live in that subsidized housing, if not market rate housing. That being said, I vote aye on all. Cool. Uh, I want to congratulate Walt Newman, our legislative director for retirement. And I want to thank uh, him for his wonderful service to our city council, and with that, I vote aye on all. Kozlowitz. Kozlowitz. Councilman Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Request permission to explain. Commission Granite. Thank you. I want to thank my colleagues for your support on intro 1547A, which strengthens the School Diversity Accountability Act. Uh, as James Baldwin taught, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. The work to look honestly on segregation in our schools began in many ways in this council five years ago when we had a 10-hour hearing, and out of that passed the School Diversity Accountability Act that has provided us with a lot of data. Um, that data has not been easy to look at, but it has been a platform for organizing. We used it aggressively in District 15 to make dramatic changes to our middle schools, and where last year three of the 11 middle schools were in any way integrated and diverse, because of those changes this year, eight of the 11 are now genuinely integrated, and we're going to get the other three next year. And that is mostly because of organizing and courage, but it would not have happened without the data that was provided by that act. So I am very glad today that we are strengthening that act, providing some additional data, comparing schools to their school attendance zones and their districts, looking at special programs within schools so that we can tell if a school is internally segregated, even if everybody going in the door is more diverse. And I'm pleased that it's part of the broader package that includes a set of bills from the chair and the public advocate and other members that I believe can give us the data and the courage to move boldly forward so that someday we will not have one of the most segregated school systems in the country. Also proud to be a co-sponsor of 1321C and very glad we're moving forward to make sure there's a living wage 
uh, for that set of workers who are working in our subsidized affordable housing. I vote aye on all. Levine. Uh, permission to explain my vote, Mr. Public Advocate? Commission Granite. Okay. Uh, I want to thank my college, colleagues for supporting intro 1361 today as we seek to force this city to confront the public health crisis of diabetes, a fight in which we have stalled, a disease which has severely disparate impacts on people of color in this city, and we need to force the city to confront this crisis. The bill does that by requiring regular release of data on all aspects of this disease, including the numbers of amputations, and by requiring that a robust plan be developed for us to win this fight. I do want to acknowledge the incredible leaders of health people for helping make this legislation possible. I'm also pleased that today we'll be passing and thank my colleagues for support of intro 550, which would bring fairness and transparency, consistency to the HPD lottery system where the stakes couldn't be higher. On average, we have 70,000 people applying to major affordable housing projects in this city, and uh, we have got to give them a lottery process which is absolutely um, beyond reproach. To do that, our bill would require that HPD regularly disclose all policies related to how people qualify for lotteries, how lotteries are uh, conducted, how waiting lists are populated and managed, um, how the transition to a fully online system will be carried out, and much more. And lastly, I want to thank everyone who made it possible for us today to make history in the way that we treat the most marginalized in society in their moment of death. For generations, we have shamefully, shamefully kept the poor, the indigent, the sick uh, on an island that has been ignored and neglected, and we owe better to these one million New Yorkers and those who every year are continued to be buried on Hart Island. Thank you to the bill sponsors, thank you to Melinda Hunt, and thank you to Speaker Corey Johnson for making this history possible. And I am pleased to vote aye on all. Lewis. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you so much. Congratulations, public advocate, on your success. And Rob Newman, you will be dearly missed. Um, I'm voting aye on all except 1152, 1153, and 1154. A large portion of my district and the ones that surround Council District 45 encompass homeowners and small businesses who feel overwhelmed um, and overburdened and overtaxed. When we're seeking to increase property taxes, we need to implement better measures to inform our homeowners and our small businesses in a timely manner that enables them to financially prepare for the anticipated changes we're requesting. While protecting us as, this helps and protects us as members um, to be transparent, who seek to support these recommendations, and this helps us to identify resources to ensure that the city can continue to function and provide necessary services. Thank you. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission to it. Uh, I wanna uh, finish the thank yous for 720. Uh, Megan Chen and Jeff Baker, thank you so much for being in the room every time we sat down and reviewed. This is why you have se uh, 720C. Uh, C is the third version of this bill, and thank you so much for that work. I also want to thank the three members who negotiated the work around the protection, the flood protection, uh, Rivera, Chin, and Powers. Um, I look to them with a lot of envy. Uh, I think about Red Hook and the work that we have to do in Red Hook to do some integrated flood protection there. And so I can't wait to learn a little bit more about how we can do that in other parts of the city. And I also want to say thank you to 32BJ for their hard work on the ground, thinking through a very complicated piece of legislation, but also I think it's going to be a very comprehensive impact to, um, to many New Yorkers. And again, a shout out to my brother, uh, Jemani Williams, our public advocate now, and the work that we have to do to ensure that no more people die on our construction sites. We do that every day uh, when we think about them, um, but this bill is going to help ensure that everyone gets trained. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Miller. 
Permission to explain my vote, please. Permission granted. Thank you, sir. Um, I'd first like to echo the, the sentiments of the speaker and condolences to the family of firefighter Cecilia Cox and um, traffic enforcement, uh, Linda Mercer. These young women were, were tireless public advocates, super sheroes that, that the work that they have done will, will not be remembered or forgotten. Uh, I'd also like to congratulate Council Member Espinal for his legislation being passed here on prevailing wage. I think that we have demonstrated here today that uh, our mission to create affordable housing and, and, and to value, respect, and bring dignity and proper compensation to workers are not mutually exclusive. And what, by what we are doing here today, we demonstrate that. Um, and I will be vote, I will vote I on all except for 563. I'll be abstaining on that and his accompany resolution 1159. I'll be voting no on 1152 and 1153. Moya. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Uh, I want to take this opportunity uh, to thank uh, our uh, esteemed colleague, Council Member uh, Espinal, uh, for his leadership uh, to 32 BJ members and to the President Kyle Bragg, uh, all the rank and file members that have come out to support uh, this intro 1321C. Uh, I'm a firm believer that taxpayer dollars should not be creating poverty wage jobs. We desperately need affordable housing. But by paying workers who maintain these properties less than prevailing wage, we're actually exacerbating the problem. Uh, so I thank them for their leadership as uh, this fight uh, continues. Uh, I will be voting aye on all with the exceptions of intro 1780 uh, and 720C. Perkins. I'm going to vote aye on all. I want to applaud the, the changes in organizing <coughs> of our schools and look forward to more of uh, reforms of the lingering segregated schools uh, that have, have yet to come to an end. In other words, uh, I, I will vote aye on all with those concerns and, and hopefully taking the forefront in terms of what we do next. Powers. Permission to explain my vote. Commissioner Grant. Thank you. I just, I, in my last comments, did not have an opportunity to say some thank yous to everybody who worked on the ESCR uh, land use application alongside of myself and the other two members. I want to thank uh, Chelsea Kelly and, and those folks in the Council of Land Use staff I want to thank uh, that uh, we had worked very hard pushing this administration to times where there were very difficult conversations to have about getting this plan to a better place. But I do want to thank uh, the Commissioner Grillo, Jamie Torres Springer, the Parks Department, the Borough President, Manhattan DOT, and others. I also want to thank um, my uh, staff, Ben Jacobs, Emily Walsh, and Liz Peters, for their work on this as well. Um, and I just want to say a thank you to Rob Newman. I don't know if he's still here, but Rob has served this uh, institution in a very uh, great way for, for years, and I've had the opportunity to work alongside of him with some unfinished legislation that we will as well get to. Um, with that being said, I'm uh, voting aye on all, with the exception of 1780. Thank you. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Public advocate, congratulations to the public advocate, Jermani Williams, for the great work. Um, uh, it wasn't a surprise, uh, but we are grateful that you are the public advocate. If there was any uh, position that was better suited for you or the other way around, it would be public advocate, and I'm really excited that you will be doing that without having to run uh, three times in less than, like, what is it, six months? Uh, so congratulations to you. Um, I do want to say to my colleagues in Manhattan, congratulations to that work. I want to be very clear that Brooklyn would kill for that type of work to be done in our borough. And we're actually very envious of the great work that you guys were able to put, do and put together to make that happen. 
In the Brooklyn delegation, we will be uh, doing our part to try to match that and, and try to be as successful as you are. You set uh, the ground game for it. So I just want to say thank you for being bold, um, for being strong, um, and doing something that I think uh, for a long time we're gonna, uh, you're going to be very happy about. So congratulations to you and to um, my neighbor in the borough of Brooklyn, uh, Councilmember Rafael Espinal, for the work that uh, he did on three, uh, one, three, two, one C. Uh, for too long, we have building service workers in the city of New York that can't uh, afford to live in the buildings where they work. Um, and uh, we, I think we got this uh, a little closer now where that reality can be true. So I want to thank him for the work that he did there and congratulate him for the work that he did there. And I would vote aye on all. Thank you. Richards. Uh, just wanted to thank the speaker for acknowledging the life of Cecilia Cox. You know, sometimes we have heroes amongst us and we don't even know it. Um, but I'm a young man whose parents uh, were best friends uh, with, with uh, her and, and her husband. And, uh, you know, I have some fond memories of playing in her house and watching a Tyson fight even uh, at one time. And, um, picked up the Daily News this week and did not even know how much history um, she made in this city. So uh, with that, I dedicate my vote to her. Um, just had spoke to her about a month ago, um, but didn't realize how sick she was. So with that, I dedicate my vote to her and I vote aye. Rivera. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. So while ESCR is just the first project of many, the city must complete quickly. But we are going to have to clear out the chamber at this time. We are going to clear the chamber at this time. We apologize for all those that are going to have to leave. But for the safety of this body, we are not going to compromise our members. If you do not sit down at this time, we are going to have to clear out the entire chamber. We cannot compromise the safety of this body, and outbursts of that kind do exactly that. Additional outbursts, and we will clear the chamber. We must respect the entire body. Thank you, Majority Leader. You guys should have stuck to the coughing. That was pretty, that was pretty cool, actually. It was pretty new. I never saw that. Thank you, uh, Council Member Rivera, for your patience. Up until now, it wasn't that bad. It was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I was, this is the most respectful protest I've ever seen. <laughs> Thank you. Up until now. Thank you, quiet in the chamber. We'll turn it back over to public advocate Jamani Williams, and we will continue with Council Member Carlina Rivera. So this is the first project of many, and my colleagues, Councilmember Mark Traeger, and as you heard from C Councilmember Menchaca, Reynoso, and of course, Donovan Richards, 
We are always talking about how we can bring resiliency projects and more sustainable community development across the five boroughs, and I do hope that we can learn from this project, and it can be a model in many ways. I have to thank a lot of people very, very quickly, including Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, Congresswoman C Carolyn Maloney, Nydia Velasquez, Assembly Members Harvey Epstein and Yuli Nu, State Senators Brad Hoyleman and Brian Kavanaugh, and all of our district leaders. I have to thank the community organizations that guided our negotiations. A special, special thanks to my community boards, community boards three and six, and Susan Setzer, the district manager, and Megan Joy are here. Park users such as Solar One, our local sports teams, especially our Little League coaches, Don, uh, Tony, Danny, and Seth, the Lower East Side Ecology Center, our Sty Town tenants, and all the NYCHA residents at Baruch, Reese, Wald, Vladik, Compost 2, LES 2, LES 3, and Gompers Houses, all of the advocates and the community organizations that have provided needed expertise to this process, including Rebuild by Design, Regional Plan Association, New York League of Conservation Voters, New Yorkers for Parks, the Lowy Sida Center, and FAB NYC. And I have to thank the Council Land Use Division, Chelsea Kelly, Arthur Ha, Raju Mann, Julie Lubin, Amy Levitan, and of course, Jason Goldman. And I have to thank my entire staff, but particularly my Chief of Staff, Pedro Carrillo for shepherding this project through from day one. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak, and I proudly vote aye on these historic land use items. Thank you, Carlina. Rodriguez. Now, please. Why does that Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. So yes, following up what I was explaining about Hot Island, I would like to add that, yeah. you know, as we were talking about the historical power of Hart Island, when the city purchased the island for $75,000 in 1968 from the, from, from the Hunter family. Then today, 150 years after, Hart Island has yes, continued to bury the immigrants and the poorest and the homeless. No wealthy families are burying that location. He has the poorest one. Those people who live in communities such as Northern Manhattan, they can live in the South Bronx, they can live in Brooklyn, in Queens, in other places where New Yorkers make close to 40% of New Yorkers living in poverty. Those New Yorkers that apply for financial support to bury their loved one. However, the city of New York only provides $1,200 of financial assistance to help to cover the cost of a cemetery and the funeral. So I believe that as we are making this transition on, on, in, on transferring the control of Hart Island from correctional to park, we also need to call the city of New York to lobby at Albany so that we can increase the financial support that we provide to family from $1,200 that we do today, amount of dollar that everyone knows is not enough to cover for the cemetery and the funeral. La persona que enterramos en Hart Island vive en el sur de Bronx, vive en el norte de Manhattan, vive en la zona postal que son de los más pobres, de los homeless y de los inmigrantes. Personas que cuando se le muere un familiar solamente califican para recibir 1,200 dólares por el costo del cementerio y la funeraria. So hoy estamos haciendo justicia, transfiriendo el control de Hart Island eh, de, de correccional al Departamento de Parque. With that, I vote aye. Rose. Um, I vote aye on all except for 1152, 1153, and 1154. Rosenthal. With congratulations to my colleagues, I vote aye on all. Torres. Aye on all. Traeger. Uh, permission to expand my vote? Permission granted. Yes, thank you, public advocate, and congratulations to you again uh, on your well-deserved victory. Um, I just want to definitely commend my colleagues, uh, Council Members Rivera, Powers, Chin, others who, uh, who I do think deserve a lot of credit for what they've been able to negotiate. But I just want to point out um, the mayor's scorecard on this issue when it comes to city capital spending on resiliency in the five boroughs. I represent Coney Island, one of the hardest hit areas, Mr. Sturm Sandy, 
certainly lower AMI levels than parts of the east side of Manhattan. Here's the scorecard, city capital spending. East side of Manhattan, $1.4 billion. Southern Brooklyn, $32 million. This is with knowledge that the Army Corps of Engineers said that Brooklyn and Queens are the most vulnerable boroughs to climate change and storms. So one billion, over a billion, to 32 million, um, we have an inequity problem here. And so Mr. Mayor, you need to align your resources and your actions with your words and your pledges. Let me just speak about my bills that we're uh, voting on today as well. With the passage of Introduction 564A, we will finally know exactly who qualifies for affordable housing and who does not and why. This bill will help shed light on the demand for affordable housing units in New York City and create transparency for residents who apply to the affordable housing lottery and the number of applicants who sign leases for affordable housing units in the city. My colleagues and I heard from many who are being rejected for unclear reasons than those who are winning the lottery. We'd like to know what is working, what's not working, and to finally answer the question, affordable for who? Additionally, intro 1554B will require the DOE to report on the demographics of all school staff in all city schools. This will include teachers, leadership staff, powers, counselors, psychologists. Um, we need a culturally responsive curricula in our school system. Um, and I just, I want to thank all the staff that helped me on the bill. And last, uh, public advocate, just a few more seconds, speaking of schools, we had another school shooting in America today in Santa Clarita, California. I believe at least two students have been shot killed, five seriously wounded. We have a crisis in this country. This government must pass gun reforms legislation immediately, but I also want to note we desperately need to hire more social workers and counselors in our schools. Thank you, that to me is something we must address in the city and across this country. And our prayers are and thoughts are, not, are, 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 are there, but not sufficient in terms of addressing this crisis that we're facing in America. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you, Councilman. Miller. Ulrich. I vote aye on all with the exception of preconsidered reso 1152, 1153, 1154. And I'm also voting against 1547A, 1550A, 1552B, 1554B, 1156A and 1780. And congratulations to our newly reelected public advocate, Jamani Williams. Congratulations, sir. Valone. Uh, Mr. Public Advocate, I'd like to officially amend my name to add my middle initial to my last name, so I'll henceforth be called Avalone to be at the front of the list for voting. What do you think? Can we do that? Is it possible? I'm not sure. <laughs> my Talking dad to the speaker, the majority leader. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking there might be a way to go. I would like to uh, vote aye and all with the exception of 1780, Rezo's 1152, 1153, and 1154. With that, congratulations and Godspeed to Rob. Thank you, everyone. Van Bramer. I don't know. Jaeger. I vote uh, aye on all with the exception of resolution 1152, 1153, 1154, intros 1780, 1156, I abstain on intros 1547, 1550, 
Thanks, everybody, for the patience. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero in the abstentions, with the exception of land use 548 and 549 with accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention, and land use 563 and Reso 1159, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, one in the negative, one in the abstention. And intro 906A, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, two in the negative, and one abstentions. And intro 909B, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, two in the negative, and one abstention. And intro 1156A, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, four in the negative, zero abstentions. And intro 1321C, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 1547A, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, three in the negative, and one abstention. And intro 1550A, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, three in the negative, and one abstention. And intro 1552A, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, three in the negative, and one abstention. And intro 1544B, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, three in the negative, and one abstention. And intro 1580A, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, two in the negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 1780A, which was adopted by a vote of 38 in the affirmative, 10 in the negative, zero abstentions. And resolutions 1152, 1153, which was adopted by a vote of 36 in the affirmative, 12 in the negative, and zero abstentions. And resolution 1154, which is adopted by a vote of 37 in affirmative, 11 in negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 720C, which is adopted by a vote of 47 in affirmative, one in the negative, and zero abstentions. The revised land use call ups now are 40 in the affirmative, and zero in the negative. Introduction and reading of the bills. All bills have been referred to committee as indicated on the agenda. Resolutions? Seeing none. Thank you. All right, we'll now move to, into general discussions. So far, we have uh, no council members uh, sign up to speak. I did want to thank the body again uh, for passing my piece of legislation. I did want to say congratulations to Rob Newman on his excellent career. He has helped me pass a number of bills, including the Community Safety Act, which is a landmark legislation this body has passed. And just lastly, uh, she thought she was going to get away, but my press secretary, Letitia Theodore Green's birthday is today, and I want to wish her a very happy birthday. She's here today. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll now call on Majority Leader Cumbo to close the meeting today. Thank you. The stated meeting of November 14th, 2019 is hereby adjourned. Thank you.